This video is mastered in HDR, and for the best experience, you should watch it in HDR on a television or device with HDR support. If you've invested in a nice HDR reference display and made the leap into color correcting in HDR, chances are you've run into a sneaky technical problem that you might not have noticed up to now, but one that is affecting the colors in your image, leading the images you render to be different from what you saw on the display. Today, I want to walk you through what the problem is, how to identify it, and how to fix it. Let's talk about the glamorous subject of transfer matrix coefficients. Hey, I'm Sam with Billado Services. I'm an independent filmmaker, colorist, and expert in video technologies, including high dynamic range video. What I'm going to walk you through today is a problem I discovered and diagnosed only after three years of HDR grading, and it was extremely perplexing. Let me show you a quick side-by-side. -side. Look at the shade of turquoise or aquamarine on the gymnast's leotard. Now look at the shade of turquoise or aquamarine in the water by the beach. These are both images I'd graded, but after I'd rendered them and uploaded them to a platform, I noticed that there was a shift in coloring when compared to what I was seeing on my HDR reference screen. I'd also seen problems with hue shifts in my yellows, brightness shifts in my reds, and brightness shifts in my more saturated greens. What was going wrong? I had a transfer matrix coefficient problem. What are transfer matrix coefficients? When you're moving RGB digital data into YCBCR for video files or for transmission over HDMI or SDI, there are three coefficients or K values that tell you how to create the Luma Y or brightness value by weighting the red, green, and blue channels based on how much they contribute to our perception of brightness. It follows this equation, Y is equal to KRR plus KGG plus KBB. These K values are the transfer coefficients. The color components chroma blue and chroma red are the differences between blue and red from the Luma, multiplied by a constant to scale the values into a specific range, and then offset by 50% to keep all of the values positive. If we substitute Y in each of these chroma equations, we can put all three Y, C, B, and C, R values in terms of R, G, and B. The coefficients from all three equations form the transfer matrix, which tells us the relationship between RGB and YCBCR, and how to losslessly move from one way of representing color to the other. Since we use the K values to generate the Luma Y value, and the CB and CR are the difference between the color channels and the Luma channel, if we change the K values at all, we change all of the color values. As long as you're encoding into YCBCR and decoding from YCBCR using the same K values, your regenerated RGB will be the same or very close to the same as your original RGB values. But here's where the problem comes in. You need to use the transfer matrix that corresponds to the color space you're using when it's defined. REC 709 has a different transfer matrix than REC 2020 or REC 2100. That's the heart of the transfer matrix problem in HDR. If you decode YCBCR using a different matrix than it was encoded in, your new RGB values will be different than your original RGB values. This was a mild annoyance in SDR since the shifts were relatively minor. But because HDR has so many more levels of brightness, small shifts in the data can result in big shifts in color hue, saturation, or brightness. Every program you use that is color space aware knows about and understands transfer coefficients. And when you select REC709 as your color space to work in or encode, they use the REC709 coefficients. When you select REC2020 or REC2100, it uses the REC2020 coefficients. Programs have been doing this for years, but not always by default. 
and not always consistently. For instance, before version 16.5 of DaVinci Resolve Studio, compressing into ProRes using Rec 2020 primaries would encode using the Rec 2020 matrix in HDR or SDR and record the right metadata in the file. But if you opened the same file you just made in Resolve, it would decode it using the Rec 709 matrix and you'd end up with brightness and color shifts. While many of the program errors are resolved today, there's still a pretty big one that isn't. SDI video. Since SD video and HD video used different transfer matrices, before 2018, SDI relied on video resolution to determine which transfer matrix to use. But since many people use HD resolutions in their grade for Rec 2020 and P3D65 content, regardless of whether they're mastering in 4K or 2K or 1080p, we couldn't reliably use resolution as a method for determining which transfer matrix and color space to use. SDI specifications weren't updated to include the Rec 2020 matrix until the 2018 revision that added colorimetry metadata, that's color space transfer function and transfer matrix data, over the SDI signal. Prior to that change, all SDI devices defaulted to using the Rec 709 matrix. The first devices that supported SDI colorimetry metadata started to hit the market in 2019 and 2020. All newer I.O. cards and boxes allow you to use the Rec 2020 matrix and default to using it when you switch them into Rec 2020 for SDR or HDR. But most older devices won't use any transfer matrix other than Rec 709. And even new devices that are still just hitting the market today still use older SDI chipsets that only use the Rec 709 matrix. See the problem? The computer is using the Rec 2020 matrix and all displays except for Sony's default to using the Rec. 709 matrix. So how do we get around this? The first way is simple. Use RGB if that's available to you. It's not always available to you though, since many displays and devices only support YCPCR over SDI or only 8-bit RGB over HDMI, which isn't enough for HDR grading. So another option available in many color correction platforms is a manual override of the transfer matrix, like you can see here in DaVinci Resolve. The problem here comes if you're doing something like I'm doing and reviewing my HDR content on both my HDR television, which is connected over HDMI, and my reference display, which is connected over SDI. The reference display wants the Rec. 709 matrix and the TV wants the Rec. 2020 matrix but the box will only output one or another. Also, applications like Adobe Premiere or Final Cut Pro may not allow you to set the transfer matrix separate from the color space, so that isn't always an option available to you. The last option you have to fix this issue is to use LUTs, and I've built two that I've been using to correct for this error for years, which you can download from billetoservices.com forward slash LUTs. That's what I use on my small HD OLED 22 to correct for its Rec. 709 only transfer matrix when working in Rec. 2020. I've loaded Fix for Rec. 2020 matrix decoded as Rec. 709 as a look LUT on my grading page. The LUT takes the incorrect RGB data that the small HD decoded from the SDI signal and transforms it into the correct RGB data that it would have decoded if the Rec. 2020 matrix was used. Alternatively, I could switch my resolve signal to use the Rec. 709 matrix and load a LUT called Fix for Rec. 709 matrix decoded as Rec. 2020 sitting between the computer and the television to make the correction there. If I have old content that I've graded with incorrect settings on my HDR display that were using the Rec. 709 matrix, but was or will be included using the Rec. 2020 matrix, I'd add the Fix for Rec. 709 matrix decoded as Rec. 2020 to the video file when I import it, or as the last item in the image pipeline before exporting it. Or for my older content encoded using the Rec. 2020 matrix, but is being decoded as the Rec. 709 matrix, I'd add the other LUT, Fix for Rec. 2020 matrix decoded as Rec. 709. The inability to load these fixed LUTs onto the Atomos Neon when working in HDR was one of the reasons that I couldn't recommend it for grading right off the bat. If you're able to add a LUT box before it or convert your video output to use Rec. 709 matrix, it's still a good choice. 
For DIT work, I typically bake in the matrix fix LUT as part of my overall LUT for each display that needs it, unless I can get around it by sticking with the Rec. 709 matrix. As a reminder, you can pick up these LUTs for free from billetoservices.com forward slash LUTs. I know that this video was a little bit more technical than most of my others and extremely specific, but it's a beta problem that very few people know about or realize when moving to HDR, and I don't want it to irritate or plague you for years to come as well. I hope you find this video and the LUTs I've prepared useful in your HDR work. Let me know how they work for you in the comments below or if you have any questions. And don't forget to subscribe to this channel for more tips, tricks, and tools for working in HDR. And as a reminder, all of the videos I post here will be available as special topic videos on the Master HDR video platform. So head over there and sign up to get all of your HDR information in one convenient portal and to never miss a video. Till next time, for Billado Services, I'm Samuel Billado, and I'll see you soon.